Hey guys, today we're going to look at a few Java advanced topics. So the first one is random generation. So like the name says, this, is, this allows you to randomly generate a number or a double or anything like that. And there are actually two ways we can do this. One is with the math class, which is a little more complicated in my opinion. Today we're going to look at how to randomly generate with the random class. So before we can generate anything, we have to do two things. First, we have to import the java.util package, just like we've been doing with this. After that, in our main, we're gonna create a random object. Random rand, this can be named anything, equals new random parentheses. So it's really similar to how we do scanner input. We have to first make our scanner object. So it would be scanner keyboard equals new scanner parentheses system.in. Um, it's pretty much the same here. We have random variable name equals new random. After we've done these two things, now we can start to randomly generate numbers. If we want to randomly generate an integer, we would use the next int parentheses x method. So in this case, x is a number that's the maximum that a random number can be plus one. So it's the upper limit. If you wanted to randomly generate um, a number between 0 and 10, then x would be 11, because our max number is 10 plus 1 is 11. And that's what we do here. Um, when we make a random, when we generate something random, we can either store it in a variable like this, or we can just automatically print it out. So here I made a variable. Um, it has to be int because we're generating, generating a random integer. So int rand num equals rand, which is our scanner, or sorry, our random object name. So rand.nextInt in parentheses x, 11. That's our maximum limit plus one. So it would be zero through 10. We're not gonna talk about doubles in too much detail, but the basic structure is pretty much the same. We have double rand num because we wanna store it in a double equals rand.next double instead of next int. So this will randomly generate a decimal number between zero and one. So it doesn't include one, it doesn't print out 1.0, or it doesn't generate 1.0. So there's no number inside, this just goes from zero to one decimal number. And so a few more ways you can randomly generate numbers. If we have no x, no number in between these parentheses, which means there's no maximum, no limit, then this will just generate a random number out of all the legal integers in Java. So tech, uh, theoretically from negative infinity to infinity. And we usually don't wanna do that. So like we saw in the first example, we, if we have this dot next in parentheses 10, if we just have a number inside here, that's the upper bound plus one. It prints out a random number between zero and nine. Um, 10 is not included. But if we wanted um, our lower bound to not start from zero, but instead to start from a number like one, we would have to plus our lower bound, which in this case is one. So now, instead of printing from zero to nine, we would generate a random number between one and 10. Without this plus one, this is the exact same thing as the top, it would just be next in parentheses 10. The limit would be zero and nine. But since we're adding one, we would add one to both limits. So we would have to add one to zero, which becomes one, and then add one to nine, which becomes 10. So now 10 is included. So it can generate any number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. But here without the plus one, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the basic formula we can use when things get a little more complicated, so not just um, adding one, is y minus x plus one plus x. So that sounds really complicated, but um, let's break it down. So x is our lower bound. In this example, our lower bound, we wanted to do from one to 10. So our lower bound would be one. That's our x. y is our upper bound. So in this case, it would be 10. So y is 10. Then we just plug in y and x into rand.nextint y minus x plus one plus x. So y is 10, we would do 10 minus x, which is one plus one. So 10 minus one plus one um, is 10. 
So that would be what's inside our parentheses. And on the outside, we have plus x, which is our lower bound, plus 1. That's exactly what we have written here for value 3, val 3. That's how we would generate between the bounds of 1 and 10. And another example, so now 6 is the lower bound. So that's our x. 12 is the upper bound, which is our y. Then we plug it in, plug it in again. We would get 12 minus 6 plus 1 plus 6. It's just plugging in, so y is 12. 12 minus 6 plus 1. On the outside, plus 6, which simplifies to just rand.nextin parentheses 7 plus 6. OK, so in Eclipse, we can do some examples of these. I'm going to comment this out. So, the first example is generating a number between 9 and 32. Or actually, let's do a different example. So I'm going to make it um, int num equals gen dot next int. Because I wanted to do between 30 and 65. So if we just have this 66, this is going to generate a random number between 0 and 65. Remember, 66 is not included. It goes up to, but does not include 66. If we did this, it would, the lower bound is 0, because it's always, the lower bound is always 0 by default. Let me comment this out, too. So if we don't add anything outside of the parentheses, um, the lower bound will always be 0. So this will be 0 to 65. But I wanted to do from 30 to 65. If I just do this and add 30, that doesn't work either because now it's going to go from 30 to um, 95. Let's see. 30 to 95. Yeah. So we don't want that. Again, we want 30 to 65. So we're going to use our formula which is our upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. And, and, the, and then on the outside, we have plus lower bound. So this would be our upper bound is 65 minus the lower bound. We want it to be, go from 30 to 65, so 30 plus 1. And this simplifies to 36. So now it, it will generate anywhere between 30 to 65. And you can think of it as this. So without this plus 30, this just generates from 0 to 35. Then we add 30 to both bounds. So before the bound was 0, we add 30. Now it becomes lower bound becomes 30. Before the upper bound was 35, we add 30 and the upper bound now becomes 65. So that's how you can kind of double check. Okay. And a little bit of practice. So the line of code that will generate a random number between 0 to 5. So by default, again, our lower bound will always be 0 by default if we don't add anything. And we're going to store it in an integer variable. So we're going to do int num equals rgen. rgen is just the name of our random object. You can name it anything you want. So rgen dot next int parentheses. 6. 6 is our um, upper bound plus 1. We don't include 6. It goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are all the possible numbers that can be generated. And notice we don't have anything plus 0, or you can write plus 0, but it won't do anything, obviously, um, because by default it starts from 0. The second is write a line of code that will generate a number from 5 to 10. So now our lower bound has changed. It's not, it's no longer zero, it's five. We can't just do int num equals rgen dot next int 11 to go from zero to 10. That only go from zero to 10, but we want five to 10 inclusive. So that means we can use our formula. So again, we're storing it in a variable int num equals rgen, our random object dot next int 6 plus 5. So this is our formula. We got 6 from our formula. Upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. 10 minus 5 
is 5, plus 1 is 6. And then on the outside of the parentheses, we have plus our lower bound, which is 5. So again, you can double check this by getting rid of the plus 5 and seeing, so without the plus 5, it would generate somewhere from 0 to 5 inclusive. Then we add 5 to both bounds, 0 plus 5 and 5 plus 5. So 0 plus 5 becomes 5, 5 plus 5 becomes 10, so 5 to 10. And then number 3, write a line of code that will generate a number from 9 to 32. So this is where we definitely have to use a formula or something. It's a little complicated to try to figure out in your head. Same thing, um, store it in a variable equals rgen dot next in 24 plus 9. So how do we get 24? Our upper bound is 32 and our lower limit or lower bound is 9. So we're going to do upper limit 32 minus lower 9 plus 1. 32 minus 9 is um, 23 and then plus 1 is 24. So that is what goes inside of our parentheses because without, the, um, without this plus 9 it would go from 0 to 23. But we want it to start from 9, right? Um, so we would add 9 outside of a parentheses. So now this is our lower bound. 9 is our lower bound. We can double check it again like this. Without the plus 9, it goes from 0 to 23 inclusive. Not 24, 23 inclusive. 0 plus 9 is 9. 23 plus 9 is 32 inclusive. So that's pretty much it for random numbers. Now we're going to look at some basic definitions and structures of functions, just as an uh, introduction. So functions are code that can be called with parameters and can return a value. So we use functions so that we don't have to rewrite code a lot. Because if there is some code that we want to um, do execute multiple times, without functions, we have to rewrite it a lot of times. Every single time we want to execute that, and that's just a lot of work really repetitive. So with functions, we can just call a function every time we need that code, and it saves a lot of space. And, and for now, we're not going to talk about parameters in detail. We're just going to leave that blank and, blank and learn more later. So you don't have to worry about that. So in this code, in our main function, we have all of this code. It's very repetitive, very long. We're writing the same thing three times as, we're, as you see here we're doing. We're randomly gener generating a dice and then doing some if statements randomly generating it again, doing some more if statements, and then a third time. So we're basically repeating the same code three times. And that's, um, you can see it's really long and repetitive and also hard to read. So we can solve this and make it easier and cleaner by using functions. So we just made a new function called roll dice. And all of the code that was once in here, once repeated in main, is all it's only written once inside of this new function. So every time we want to execute this code, um, we can just call the function without having to rewrite all of this code more than once. So it's very convenient. Now let's look at the basic structure of a function. So public static void roll dice. This is the function declaration. It tells Java that we want to make a, uh, make a function. Um, you don't need to worry about public. We're just going to make all of our functions public for now. Basically, we're always basically always going to make it public. So this next keyword is called static. And all of our functions for now will also be static. And then the void, this is void. This tells Java that our function doesn't return anything. So functions can actually return or send back information like integers, doubles, um, strings, stuff like that. For now, we're not doing all of any of that, so we're just going to do void. This means that it doesn't return anything. All it does is execute the code inside of the function and then go back to wherever the function was called, in this case, main. And it doesn't um, return any information, just executes. Uh, the next part is roll dice, parentheses, parentheses. This is the name of our function. So we said before, we're not going to look at parameters yet. Um, you can leave that blank. So 
nothing has to be inside of the parentheses for now. This is the basic structure of how we're going to write functions for now. So inside between these cur two curly brackets, we have all the code that we want to that is going to execute every single time the function is called. And then back here, main is calling roll dice three times. This is how we call a function. Um, we have the function name and then the parentheses, whatever goes inside. We don't want anything inside yet. We don't, we're not learning about uh, parameters yet. So this is how we call a function with the function name uh, parentheses. So let's go back to main and let's say we just, our program just begins. We go inside main and then we see roll dice is called. And we go down to the roll dice function, execute all of this code, go back, and then we see roll dice is called again. We go down to the roll dice function again and call it, um, execute it again, and then finally go back again, see it's called a third time, execute it, execute it a third time. So in reality, this does the exact same thing as all of this. So it's a lot more concise and clean easier to read too. So as you can see, we didn't repeat any code here. We didn't repeat any if statements, else statements. All we did was call the function three times and it repeated what we wanted to do three times because we called it. Okay, so the last topic is gonna to be typecasting. So typecasting is when you assign the value of a primitive data type to another. Remember a primitive data type is basically just a very simple data type that holds simple values like integers, decimals, char, boolean, true or false, things like that, very simple. So to do this, basically typecasting is we want to turn um, a data type into a different data type. So here we have an average GPA, 3.1. This is a double because it has a decimal. And then we have an int GPA. We want to turn this double GPA into an int. So we do this with typecasting. We first have the data type that we want to typecast to, that we want to change it to. In this case, we want to change the double to an int. So we have int GPA equals, and then we have in parentheses, again, what we want to change it to, we want to change it to an int. So we have parentheses int average GPA. This is the um, variable that we want to change. So now when we print out this int GPA variable, this gives us three, which is the int, which is the typecasted version of average GPA. It gets rid of the decimal and turns it into an int, which is three. And if we look at an example, as we learned before, if we try to divide, let's see. If we try to divide two integers like this, we have num1 equals five and num2 equals two. If we try to divide those, then we will get an integer as a result. That's not the correct answer. Five divided by two is not two, but um, Java will still print out two because it's in, an integer. And 2.5, which is the correct answer, is a double. So the only, one of the only ways to get that answer is to typecast. So we want to typecast it from an int from 2 to 2.5, which is a double. So we're going to have our variable data type as a double because that's what we're trying to go to. We're trying to change it from an int to a double. Double result equals, then in parentheses, we have again what we want to change it to, which is a double, and then num1 divided by num2. Now, if we print this, it's actually going to give us the correct decimal answer because of typecasting. So that is the basic idea of typecasting, just changing um, data types from ints to doubles, doubles to ints, things like that. And you can use this in lots of ways, like calculating GPAs. Um, if the user is only enter, entering integers, whole numbers, we can get like averages, um, things like that through typecasting. So that is it for this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.